Welcome back to another entry of Waiting on the Trade, the Dream Journal. I'm Patrick Fitzgerald Fleck, and as always, I'm joined by my two favorite reoccurring nightmares, Matthew Ledger. Hello. And Michael Drew. He's got a skin disease. I mean, hi. <laughs> nice to see everyone again. Mike's just nailing it today. I'm sorry. It's like, Mike wins the podcast already. <laughs> This episode, we're exploring the Sandman Volume 3, Dream Country. This one's more of an anthology of short stories than a single plot line, but that won't stop me from asking Matt to summarize it for us. What you got, Matt? I've got a really good summary, Pat. As always. Dream Country contains four short stories starring a shitheel writer and a captured muse, a cat who wants to take over the world, a William Shakespeare, and DC Comics all-star Element Girl. Almost every story is illustrated by a different artist, showing off how varied and disparate Sandman can be. But do these stories have any connecting threads? We will find out in this discussion. They Maybe. Do. They, they do, Pat says. They do. So whose discussion question should we start with? We could do my question first. I like my question. I, think I was best. literally discussing your question with Kat 10 minutes before this, and we both had the same answer. I mean, yeah, but you and Kat are, uh, speaking of cats that want to take over the world, you you live with one. Anyways. I going to say, <laughs> the first two descriptions of your summary very, hits very close to you, Matt. The shit yes. writer. Cat <laughs> <Shit writer>. <laughs> <laughs> cats who want to take over the world. Perfect. Um, oh, so yeah. Aaron, Mike, what's your question? What's your question? Which entity has greater power, death or dream? Okay, we're going to do another countdown, even though. I thought it was fine. All- no, okay, no, but like, no, he's fine. But I'm like, are we gonna do another countdown to our answer? Because we did that last time. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, when you guys yeah, were wrong sure. and I was right, and we'll do it this time when you guys are wrong. <laughs> Pretty yeah, sure yeah. that we were right and you were wrong, but it's fine. You can okay. still keep thinking that you're right because you're wrong. I will let you know that Kat also kind of agreed with me about the last question, although she would say destiny is the least moral of the endless. I tried to point out destiny was not in that volume. She did not care. Destiny's the most moral of the endless. Oh, okay. That might be a side question. (laughs) But first, three, two, one. Death, obviously. Dream? (laughs) Dream? Question mark? I have a dream with a question mark. Okay, so I have one out for you guys to be right, and that's it. And I want to see if you hit it. Well, Mike, see if you can hit it. Go ahead. Oh, well, I, I doubt I will, but we'll try. It's all right. All right, so we've got Death, who is arguably, I mean, she's Death. She she Everything dies, therefore she has, in some respect, control over everything at, at a specific point in their yeah, existence. Mike, I'm going to give you a, a point in your favor. I don't know that it's control. Death can control stuff, maybe. I could. I guess she does demonstrate that in this book. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, shut the death... fuck up. Let me finish. No, 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 no. Just shut the fuck down. this is worth examining. And if we're going to only do three discussion questions per podcast, let's dig into them. Okay, fine. Fuck you. Go ahead. Death controls when people die or entities no. die. Does she, she though? Does I think she... she just shows up when shit happens, which is. This is what I'm... Yeah, no, we're we're agreeing, Mike. We're saying the oh. same thing. Oh, death... I thought we were arguing. I'm sorry. Death herself does not kill anyone. No, I mean she she can offer help, but she doesn't she doesn't dictate. I don't know. When that I've happens. read this before, and I've read other death stories. She doesn't kill people. No, she doesn't. No, she's just like, hey, you died. I'm you here. Died. Let's go Come do on. what's next. Which go. here's a question for you guys: Hell exists <laughs> in Sandman. Is hell what's next for some people, or is well, is hell just another stage of life? I don't know. I mean, I went through hell in my 20s, so there's... uh, Whatever. Moving on. I mean, hell is what you make it, right? That's what we learned in the Element Girl story. Hell is other people is what we learned in the Element Girl story. (laughs) I thought they were the friends we made along the way. Anyways, (laughs) speaking of hell... Hell is the people you do a podcast with, Mike. I understand this clearly right now. (laughs) All right, Mike, Uh, so why is Dream more powerful than Death? How okay. dare you try to steer him back on the tracks? Get out of here. Well, got let's, so we've got Death, who shows up randomly in places when things happen. Dream <laughs> is constantly everywhere. Like, we have, in theory, Death shows up at, like, 
at specific moments when when I things need to be. Talks about how she's constantly everywhere in this. Okay. Can I let me find you this quote, Mike? Hang okay, on. let's 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 go there. Go ahead. I will allow you to argue like the pathetic I'm lawyer. Paging. I'm pa- Here we go. Listeners, Matt has had a few beers before we started this, so that Matt has had two beers. One of them was a double, though. Oh fuck! Why are I gotta catch up? No, I don't I'm feel in... like this is fair. I am in cars and boats and planes, in hospitals and forests and abattoirs. For some folks, death is a release, and for others, death is an abomination—a terrible thing. But in the end, I'm there for all of them. I am in all those places, and I'm also here talking to you. So death is also everywhere. No, no, no. Death is wherever death is occurring. That, that's Which is that, everywhere. That, okay, not all the time, though. Like, <sighs> okay, how many times does something die in its life? When, when, when a, in a living thing's life, how many times does it die? Sure, once. Once. Okay. Uh, maybe twice if you're lucky. How many times do those things dream? More than once. Yeah, more than fucking once. So dream is. And not infinitely more and everywhere, but he he's got a lot more time with everything. And given this hidden ability that somehow exists, that if enough of these beings that are dreaming at any given time start dreaming the same dream, they can change the whole of reality. Oh, Mike, you're so close to it. It 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 seems like dream can literally change. He could be given the opportunity to change. All of reality into okay. a in a way where death would not even be in existence, where he could he could rewrite all of the other like he could rewrite reality to be just a dream, like that's right. Like maybe I'm not reading it correctly, but he's got a that's a pretty fucking ridiculous ability. Okay, so Mike's real close to it, and I think I'm going to give it to him. Could human beings dream death out of existence? Go. <laughs> Why the fuck not? This is what, like kind of right. Like I, so, I was considering the question, and we were texting back and forth. And I was like, "It's obviously death," but then I reread it recently, and I was like, "The cats can dream a world where cats are the dominant species. Could humanity not just dream death out of existence?" I literally don't know. Maybe we sort of read a short story where they did that for a time, at least. It's a good question, and I mean. Death in Venice, or whatever it is. Oh, that's right. Kind of, huh? I don't think it's called Death in Venice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember to look it up. No, it is. I, that's correct. I remember, because it's a title that's taken from some other story. So, right? Like, I'm sorry. I agree. Death is in... It's death and Venice. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my bad. I agree. In in the scheme of things, death probably is more powerful. Uh, in In... Respects, but Dream has a pretty big fucking stick to quote Teddy Roosevelt because every good body. Also, death is sort of a one trick pony, right? Yeah. Like, like, she only has one job to do. She does it very well and she does it all over the place all the time, but it is only one thing. Dream, I don't think, has a limit. It's only limited by the creativity. Imagination of the beings in existence, yeah. Of the people dreaming. So. Well, not even people, right? Like, I mean, whomever. Cats. See, fucking cats having. Don't don't. Hey, cat, how's it going? Cats can dream. I almost had cat hop in here because I was like, cat, I'm gonna get outvoted, and I could use a backup. But she was like, no, I haven't read it, and I was like, all right, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, I haven't read it. So yeah, th- th- that's my answer to that question. I think I do. I, I think dream is conceivably the more powerful of the two. I've already talked a lot, Pat, so you have to talk now. Pat, break or tie? I am leaning more towards Mike's, but I guess I have a question. Yeah, you are. Does, in the story, A Dream of a Thousand Cats, Dream, like Morpheus himself, isn't shaping the world. It's the intent of the dreamers, right, that's shaping the world? Yes. Can you then call that dreams power if he himself isn't wielding it not really eh, not really i, I mean so I don't know. at the same time we just said that death doesn't kill people so really what is she doing exactly yeah i guess that's another question right like it comes back to that same thing dream said in the last volume to desire where he's like hey we're the dolls because 
do they actually have any power or do we just do stuff and like they exist because we do stuff right. which is such a neo gaming thing right like killing or, or dying happens and death occurs yep but death wouldn't occur unless mortals existed or, yeah well, died, a, right? It's like, the chicken or the egg kind of thing, and the same thing with dreaming. If we you somehow dream. dream into existence a world where we don't die, death would cease to have existed, right? Because that's the thing he tells the cat is like, not only did they dream into an existence a world where they were the dominant species, like they dreamed a world where it was always that way, where you, where this never even fucking happened. So, could you dream a world where death just never happened? I probably, yeah, you probably could. Probably. So maybe you guys are right. I don't know. But like canonically, when the Endless talk amongst themselves, they talk about the fact that, and Pat, you probably have this more memorized than I do, so correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. It's destiny, then death, then dream, and then the rest of them. Well, yeah, I mean, in seniority and the fact that they're in age, yes, I think death. Actually, I don't know about dream and destiny, but yes. Neither do I. I can't remember which strength. Oh my god! I was gonna Google it today, and I got too busy. I'm sure at one point stuff. <laughs> Morpheus I, might refer, like death might say my two think, younger brothers or something like that. I think that order is correct for how it's how I've seen it in the past too. And it sounds right. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to but at the same right time, now. destiny doesn't do anything other than what his book dictates him to do. Yeah, which is why, actually, like, Kat was trying to argue that Destiny is the least moral of the Endless when we were talking. I'd say that, that the... absolves of him any morality. He's in, in charge of his actions. He's a, you he's know, it's like, uh, you're always in charge of your actions, though, a little bit. I mean, not always. Destiny. Anyway, he's literally, it's written, and he does what it says. He, he this might to be do a discussion for a future episode, I feel like, maybe. We'll okay, see. I'm, just, I'm saying most Endless, at least of those three... I don't think have ownership of what, like in these instances of what powers that they control. So in that way, I don't, I don't know if, if, yeah, that's my point. Like, I don't know if the endless actually have power. So this question is sort of moot for me. So my take on it initially, before kind of re-examining it in light of the cat story was that, People can't dream if they're dead, but dreaming people can die, right? Like that's the like that's the hierarchy for me. Is like sure, sure. Where is it written that that dead, dead people couldn't dream? I mean, so that's a kind of a thing actually too. Which again, Cat had brought up when we were talking is like dead people go to heaven or hell via Christian whatever, and like hell exists in DC comics. So, like, if you go to hell in DC Comics, have you truly died, or are you still waiting for death to claim you? No, you're waiting for Joss Whedon to make a movie about you. <laughs> in, in Facade, Death says that Rainy is looking for Oblivion. She says Oblivion's not going to happen. Oblivion's not an option. You're going somewhere. No, but, like, so that's kind of a thing. Is So where does death take people canonically via neo game and salmon comics because like it's it's probably not the hell right i mean it might be it it's might to, be it's to whatever's next is what she always says it very well could be hell like i could see like why would hell exist if not to fulfill the purpose that it fulfills in the uh judeo-christian uh, it's like so Blase. And like, if you don't believe in hell, do you not go there? Like, it's so, I don't know. Where <laughs> all does I can tell you take is, people? Neil Gaiman, tell me. <laughs> all I can tell you is when Cap jumped out of the plane, he's like, there's only one God, ma'am. And they don't, learn, he doesn't dress like that. So that's, that's it. Technically, that would imply that hell also exists in Marvel. So it's not just, it, it's, it's a universal idea, is what I'm getting Hell does at. exist in Marvel. <laughs> but like, Asgard exists in Marvel. So who the fuck knows? I mean, in the sound of her wings, doesn't she say that she doesn't even know what's next? I so, mean, it could be that she just doesn't maybe, know Maybe, but next. then, like, they know about hell. Morpheus went there. So, like, does yeah. that count, then? I, I don't know. I mean, hell needs to be filled with souls somehow, right? 
Like it's possible she she knows what comes next. She just doesn't know what comes next for that person. Maybe it's to keep her impartial. Like she doesn't know where everyone goes. Well, I mean, it's possible that like you only go to hell if you believe in hell, right? In the same way that the endless only exists because people exist. Like I don't, I don't think it's fair to hold Neil Gaiman accountable to make right all of the existence of the DC universe. Oh no, I'm not trying to do that, Pat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, well, like at some point, the minutia of a comic book shouldn't be examined beyond a certain point. Right. Like there's Pat, going to why be, do we even podcast? That? I'm just saying we're circling around the fact that there aren't answers because there just are aren't. No, I'd still, I still think I'm thinking about this from a game design perspective now of all. Sure, things, why not? Yeah. Perfect. Of like, is there a world where the dreamers would be allowed to circumvent rule 23, which is people must die? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I guess it depends on what you consider death to be. Is it just endings? Yeah. I would, I would, th- I don't know if a universe can exist without endings. Yeah. If you have a beginning, that means there needs to be an end. So I don't know if it would be like, I mean, but. Like, a rule maybe of the that's universe just our would be... limited, weird human mindset, though. I don't know. I'm, I'm with, like, it's a law of the universe that if things begin, things end. I mean, I think my real, like, bullshit nerd argument is canonically the older the endless hour, the more powerful they are. <laughs> and, like, death is older than dream. I question whether she's actually older than him. Mike, I'm looking at a list here, and it lists them in order. It says destiny, death, dream, destruction, desire, despair, delirium. That means so, something died before something dreamed. That okay, fine. I'll I'll accept it. It's fine. I mean, yes, probably. I mean, to dream, you'd have to have a certain level There's of. There's a lot of complex right? circuitry you'd need up there. Yeah. Single-celled organisms die. Probably didn't. Die, you're right. And they did have a destiny to die. Well, because they existed. Yes. And they did things. Yes. And then they they're, in, they're in the book somewhere. Yeah, the first few, the first first few chapters of the book are pretty boring. But yeah, some stuff crawl out of the ocean. It mostly died, but one of them did okay. So Mike says dream. Matt says death. I think so. Yes, although I <laughs> do think Mike has an out with the cats thing. Sure, cats are super powerful. And I say neither actually wield any power. So it no one any has sense. power except the beings of the universe. So that was good. Good question. Should we take mine next? Because I feel like Pat's is all-encompassing. That should be last. <laughs> yeah, let's do yours. What is the most horrific action in this volume? Because, like, there's bad stuff that happens in this volume. In I'd Sandman? Argue... What? <laughs> yeah, right. I'd argue the worst thing is the fact that, like, Calliope is, like, captured and raped for years? Decades? Like, like seventy some. Morpheus years. was captured. He didn't get raped. Why does bad stuff happen to women in Sandman, you guys? Because he was in a bubble. She wasn't. My answer is 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 because it's a horror story. Sure. But like. But that's not the question that's being. <laughs> I'm answering the second question and not the first. Yes, I know. I th- so for me, it's. Honestly, between because I before we started recording, I told you guys like there are two things I potentially considered, but mostly this question's here because I want to start talking about the fact that like the book is not entirely kind to women. But the two I, the two things ahead. I had considered, and Pat, I'll give you a second, Thank is you. Calliope being like raped and captured and chained up and locked in a room a lot, uh. or the cat in the second issue's children just being like tossed in a river because like what the hell i think the first one's much worse but the second one's not good either okay so i'm torn between between the kittens or or calliope i uh (laughs) yeah there's no good way to go about it like they're both pretty fucking awful but i do agree like it it does seem that a dream suffered something very, very similar to her and did not get raped. Decidedly was, was like, naked. that's the I'm thing, right? Is like um, their imprisonments are compared in this volume, but dream is not raped. <laughs> like dream, 
did not have to deal with that's that's a whole extra layer of not only imprisonment and loss of freedom but also loss of control like violation, over your, right just like yeah. complete uh, like, and there's the, and utter being like you're being degraded you're less than less than a, a i guess she's not a person less no, than I mean, the personified person is a, that she is. I don't know what she's like. She's not, all the time, she's not a human. Like I don't. I don't know that she is a person. I'm not saying she's not. I just don't like. She's. I can't say she's not made less than human. Is what I was trying to. Anyways, Pat, you had a thought. <laughs> I think. Well, I'm going to answer the second question because that's the question I thought you were going to answer or oh, yeah. ask first time. My answer to why are women treated the way they are in this book is because. It's a horror comic written in the 80s and early 90s. And it is okay, so now a comic you're of its, with, time. it's a product of a time. But, like, fuck that. I'm just, as someone whose comic life started with The Crow, in which I will tell you the treatment of Calliope is very similar to the main character's girlfriend. Oh, boy. Pat, oh boy. can I... You've been on the email chain that I've been having with the people who are going to eventually guest host on this and other episodes it and we talked about identity crisis like it doesn't stop in the 90s man <laughs> it goes till 2007 at least sure and i think yeah, yes <laughs> but i would say that well it doesn't fully excuse the treatment of women and the use of them for evoking a horrific scene I, I, I don't mean. I guess my question revolved like mistreatment of women, sexual assault on women. It seems it's it's sort of a cheap shock factor, right? But at yes. the same time, if you're trying to write a world that is, hmm, can you at once like treat it as a real thing that happens in a story, or is that like is any mention or depiction of sexual violence in a in and of itself, something to be derided? Like, is it something to be avoided? Or, like, tell me, Matt, as a writer. That's the thing that I don't think I've really written about or, like, at all. Because to me, like, unfortunately, it's not sexual a violence is a thing that encounter. exists, though. Well, sure, but it's like, it's, no, I mean, I agree with you. Like, and if you're crafting a real or trying to craft a real world, wouldn't removing the thing that is. It's a powerful thing. Like the depiction of Calliope in this is is both written and illustrated in a way to evoke nausea and and upsetness from the readers, right? It's not No, and I agree with you like the thing you get out of the fact that Madoc rapes Calliope is Madoc fucking sucks and he's terrible, right? Like and he's depicted as such. Yeah. But like every single volume of Sandman so far has had women getting like <laughs> right. And I do think you probably raped. yeah. Yep. And I do times. think Gaiman could probably have found better means of of doing horror than that. But and like, would a terrible dude do this to this muse? Probably yes. Yeah. But like, dudes can be raped too. There's no dudes getting raped in Sandman. <laughs> It is an interesting point that this was written in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and, is it though, Mike, or is it just like I, people I have is. sucked for a long time? I know, people have sucked. F- f- fuck you, dude. F- people have sucked for forever. Since there have been people. People like, continue to suck. Yeah, it, it's... It, it, in the 80s and 90s, this, this, I mean, you, you know as well as I do that this was this is a trope. Like, yeah, there... It, it was... It was an easy shock factor, and it establishes the bad guy as a bad guy. And, oh, he's a bad guy because he raped her. And that's really, like, what we do get some backstory to Calliope, which I do. Am I saying her name right? There's an E like, at the end. It's close Calliope. to that. Calliope. Yeah. Calliope. Calliope. I'm so, it was I, spelled out on one of the pages. Hang on. My, my Midwestern accent is coming through. Calliope. 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 Like, like, she has the backstory of, she was... She was coming back for a visit after a long time, and she was just being nostalgic. And uh, so, so we get some some backstory for her actually being her own being. But for the most part, guys, she's there as a she's there to be a damsel. Like that's what she is. 
I, I don't I mean for the character this, yeah. Like there could very well have been any other character there and there's no nothing really that she brings that anyone else couldn't have brought. Uh, I mean I don't I don't actually know if I just like agree with that. Like the fact that she's a historical muse plays in like I actually kind of agree with Pat's point that like this is a thing would happen that would happen if this situation occurred. But at the same time, like, well, I mean, how many times if you take it as, okay. So in Gaiman's world, muses inspired artists, the artists wooed the muses, right? That's what he said that historically that's the way you, you would woo them. And then they would. So is it in his world? Do you have to have sex with a muse for them to inspire you? Is that just like a thing that is given? I don't know. Because that's the real question. Like, if sex doesn't need to happen, then holy God, what the heck are those men doing to that poor woman? Oh, I mean, they're terrible men. Like, we're not, we're all in agreement about that. <laughs> and it's just, it's a very game and twist on the idea of muses and how they inspired artists. And then taking it to extremes. I don't know if it's. I'm still on the fence. I haven't answered the question yet. Between between the the kittens drowning or the rape of Calliope, Calliope. Kittens drowning is also very sad. I mean, it you can, you can understand why the cats want to fucking kill everyone. Like, yeah, yeah. I had these kittens and they were beautiful and my life was happy. And then someone put them in a bag and drowned them in front of me. You know, I would... I'd I'd kill some people. There'd be some death. It's a logical next thing to happen, but instead it's a house pet. And it's... uh, I know there's an awful lot of personifying I'm doing here because it's... It's... it's, I mean, you're meant to personify. Like, that's the whole point of the story. That's true. Uh, But it's, it's, it's... It's... It's a torturous... Torturous read. So I, I don't. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I, I'm I'm sorry. You you go ahead. Maybe I'll have made up my decision by, by the time you're done. No. So like the third action I was considering was when Ra transforms Rainy into Element Girl, because like that's it's not quite a rape, but it's close, right? Like she want like she's ordered to go in there, and she does, and I think she wants to go because she wants to get powers for Uncle Sam. But like right. look okay. at that pay like that panel where Ra is just like molding her and she's so in distress. Just like ah two out of four volumes I would argue kinda have a or two out of four issues kinda have a rape in them a little bit. Plus those artists aren't paid. It's rough. Yes, yeah. Uh... Oberon got a free show. Ah, I think I'm gonna, I think I have to go with the uh, with the kittens. I'm sorry. It's you can't drum babies, guys. Don't drum babies. Drumming babies is bad. Okay. It is bad. Mm. I don't know if it's as bad as raping a muse for like literally sixty years or whatever it is, though. Except, except the, the Modoc guy only had like one year. So there you go. So it's not his all. Uh, he all had so many more years than that, Mike. He wrote multiple novels. Okay, fine. Like, you're plus right. the other I'm guy not... before that, Erasmus Fry. Yeah, but that's his fault. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, it doesn't make the rape any less rape. No. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. The series does not always treat women well, and I think that's worth talking about. And that's mostly what the question was about for me. <laughs> it's it is a fair point. And it is, it is noticeable that every every issue, every volume, that every issue has seems to have that problem. All right, Pat, do you have a decision yet? I was going to say. I think something. it's Calliope, but my, I think mistreatment of animals is awful. But at the end of the day, it's an animal, right? In this, they're personified to have like. High. Still a living being. Still kill the living being. No, like, I know, and it's awful, but like I mean I agree with you. And they don't I don't think cats have telepathy. So I don't think the mother cat would like I mean feel you don't know dying. about cat. you don't know about whether it's they true. do or not. I, I don't, this is true. I should the qualify. Yes. 
sorry, finish, finish. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. So I, say, I should qualify my answer is I, I am putting the cats that are drowning into my personified bubble. So they have all the emotions that are displayed in, in this sure. book. Mike's a parent. He cares about children. It's whatever. It's, it's his trigger. I understand. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. I okay. understand. It's true. it's true at this point. <laughs> but my thing with Calliope, obviously the, her treatment is monstrous at the hands of both Aramis and Madoc. But I think what really like twists the knife for me is the fact that she asks for help from the, Hecate, and they say no for the dumbest of reasons, and that that just ruins it for me. Like that's just awful. It is the Sandman, right? Like it's his series, but like Calliope's got to wait for that man to rescue her. Well, Hecate, yeah, the Hecate say, yeah, can't do anything because Aramis knew his myths, knew that he needed that flower, and he burned your scroll. Our hands are are tied. Can't do anything for you. Sorry. It's like the fuck? This guy can come save you. So because a story, an old story, says a muse can be captured this way, this woman is damned for decades of torture. It's just yeah, that's pretty awful. It is notable that Morpheus comes to rescue her as opposed to Nala in volume one, who he's like, fuck you. Yeah, Nala just Sat in hell and, as far as we know, is still there. Which, again, not this a... treatment of women in the volume, the story. I, I haven't forgiven you yet. I think it's not up, but yeah. Is it not a? Oh, I'm sorry. I wrote it wrong. That yeah. wasn't the line. Okay. It's true. All right, okay. Pat, should we tackle your question? Sure. 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 It's very uplifting for that one. Actually, this sure. whole volume. Yeah, I'm sorry for being such a downer, you guys, but <laughs> like, we're. Th- Three elevenths of the way in, and like we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about the fact that people get keep getting raped in this series. And unfortunately, mostly are predominantly women. And yeah, I agree that that is. I think of any kind of negatives anyone could throw at the Sandman, I think treatment of women would be number one. If you if you were going to introduce someone to the series, I would probably give them a warning that. Speaking there of problems with women, has anyone seen Kyle Rayner's refrigerator recently? The yeah, comics have a history of uh, <laughs> not, not doing great, great stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you get what I mean? He's just you keep doing better. Moving forward. Speaking of, here's my question. If we were to consider these stories to be cautionary tales, what is Gaiman trying to warn us about? I want to back up a little bit. Okay. Why should I consider these stories to be cautionary tales, Pat? I mean, that's just a given for the question, Matthew. You no, 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 but uh, kind of salt the premise a little bit here, Pat. Have you ever <laughs> been an unpaid artist, Matthew? Do you know what that's like? Yes. <laughs> Mike. Then you damn well know why they're cautionary tales. You don't just it, agree to play in the true. middle of the fields. You get your Sometimes payment up you front. Just put your shit on Gumroad, Mike. You put your shit on Gumroad and you hope, and no one buys it. Anyways, I want to go back up. Do I, why do I consider these stories to be cautionary tales, Pat? Because I'm not sure I did until you posed the question. And then I was like, oh, I get it. But I want to hear you explain I, it. I don't know if what I don't know if I have an explanation of why you should. It's just the assumption for the question to exist. So like why do you why do you have that assumption? I don't what? What? <laughs> I don't understand your question. The, well, sorry. the book didn't... I didn't turn to a page on the book and it was like, hey, these are cautionary tales. <laughs> so, yeah, like, for the question to work, you are to then consider them as such and then try well, to yeah, interpret like, them. Obviously, you assume that they are. Why so? Because it's a way to analyze the stories in a different perspective. I don't understand your question. What about, what about the stories makes you think they're cautionary tales? I think they're great, Pat. I think that they're, I, uh, I should I'm do everything in these stories. That's obviously not true. You should, I would be very happy to see you perform a play in the middle of a field, Matthew. I will, <laughs> I will pay you in full to, to see your performance. Sometimes I sing the music for movies in computer labs. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> But do you get what I'm saying, Pat? Like, not the really. question assumes a thing that I'm not entirely sure is true. 
So can But that's why that it's in this that's that's not the point of the question. The point of the uh, question is to then logic classes in college. I <laughs> took plenty. I took physics. You have to set assumptions for the question to make uh, sense. At, physicists don't set assumptions. They like they assume things to try to like do equations or whatever. There you the go. The day, you just said they do assumptions. But at the end of the day, they break down their assumptions, Pat. No, they don't. <laughs> they <laughs> set at the beginning of the question what the assumptions are. Matthew, who has the degree in physics? You probably. Why are they cautionary? Because they can be interpreted as such is why they are cautionary tales. They're such assholes, you know that? Why am I an asshole? Because I Why are you an asshole? All I did was ask a That's question. That's that we have to break down. And we haven't even gotten to it yet, because Matt is picking apart the very substance of my question. I think, but, I honestly think it's interesting that you assume they're cautionary tales, because I didn't, so I want to know why. Matthew, why do you think I consider these to be cautionary tales? How dare you? <laughs> Stupid. Mike, I'm interested think? on your ass. No, don't, don't off put it to Mike. No, I want to hear what Mike thinks. You want, you want to know what I think? I think you all are. Care. I think you all. I think you all are nuts. I think reading these um, stories, there are actions taken that obviously didn't lead to good endings. Unless. Okay. Unless what? Did, was there an ending that you thought was beneficial to the characters in the story? I really thought when Element Girl finally committed suicide by son, that was... No, not really. I mean, right. Shakespeare's there... doing okay. Not really. I'll get no. there. Though. So elaborate on that, Pat. Why do you think Shakespeare's Do you want my okay? answers? Do you want my answers to these? I can break it down individually, and then I have one for all of them together. Yeah, I mean, do it, I guess. I'll do it individually I'll first. My question, which you refuse to oh answer. Oh, God, no. No. Because your question doesn't fucking matter. This is America. He doesn't need to answer. Pat, what kind of critical thinkers are we? I told we you don't why. examine the assumptions behind a question. You're never allowed to go get beers before we do a podcast again, Matthew. Yeah, I do, th I do think that. All right, cautionary oh. tale for Calliope. Yep. Dangers of forcing inspiration or the perversions of cr creativity for the purpose of fame. All right. Sure. A dream of a thousand cats. Our limitations can be self-inflicted. Except she's a cat. There's like, okay. Uh, the cats uh, aren't, the cats consider themselves to be cats, right? True. That's the problem. They don't dream themselves to be something greater. They're fine with their subservience to humans. And therefore they're limited by it. The main cat character is trying to convince them to dream of something more. Uh, Midsummer's Night Dream uh, is our true dreams may not be what we expect. Okay. I think William Shakespeare is pursuing his dream to be a great playwright to influence the dreams of men, while at the same time he's missing the fact that his little boy is growing up beside him, and we know that Hamlet is going to die young, so he's going to miss out on the rest of his life, and he's squandering the time that he has with his son. Fair. Fa Fair. Facade. Sometimes it's okay to give up on your dreams. Deep. Yeah? Yeah. So what did you guys have? I mean, my answer to the question is wanting something too fucking much can mess you up. Yeah. It's most of it, right? Like, all of those? So in the first one, Maddox wants to be a great writer to the point where he's willing to, like, repeatedly rape a woman. Yep. And it sucks. And the second one, that cat is obsessed with like changing the world into a cat world to the point where she's just like traveling the world, trying to convince cats to dream a cat world. The Shakespeare one you basically touched on, where like it's implied that Shakespeare just writes Hamlet when his son dies. Yeah, and Hamlet knew that was coming. Yeah, and Hamlet was like, yeah. Pretty sure My father if I just to... writes about shit. He doesn't yeah. actually like live. He just writes about living. His wife and his other daughter haven't seen him in years. I mean, a Dream talks about that in that one too, right? Where, yeah. hang on, I'm trying to find the exact quote. 
They only see the prize their hearts desire or their dream, but the price of getting what you want is getting once what once you wanted, which like, woof, that one hit home a little bit, honestly. <laughs> like, what do you do next? I don't know. I guess sit in your apartment and have depression, according to Facade. Yeah. Also not wrong. Like, that's that's a thing. So yeah, Pat, like part of the reason I asked you about the assumption in the question is because I hadn't considered it that way before, but rereading it, I found it, I think. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Where, like, in each of the stories, maybe not exactly the cat's one, but, like, in each of the other stories, like, the protagonist wanted the thing so much that they fucked up the rest of their lives. Yeah. And I'm not even sure Rainey wanted it that much. She was given it. Like, that's the thing is, like... She just kind of ended up with it. Yeah, so it's like, is it just, like, being exceptional fucks you up? Is that the moral? <laughs> I mean, my overarching moral is the dangers of getting caught up in the stories we tell ourselves, which is basically the same thing as you Close, said. Yeah. Because, yeah, as you said, Aramis and Maddock got caught up in the allure of being celebrated authors and to keep that facade uh, going they do monstrous things make promises to release Calliope and then never do but then at the same the what, what was that? can we talk about that hairball? yeah that was we a can. weird that's a very <laughs> strange game in, insert to that that was great that's a great best way to start a story is to I see. did really love the moment where Bry starts explaining what they are and is like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm just like <laughs> doing <laughs> exposition right now. I'm sorry. Which is such a writer thing where you're like, yep. oh shit, I'm putting too much of my research for this story into this story. <laughs> Anyways, continue, Pat. Yeah, I mean, and then Calliope, as I pointed out, the fact that she's basically trapped is only because of the story, the myth of the muses have trapped her there. Like she's following the rules dictated by the myth that Aramis caught her with a flower and burned her scroll and therefore she can't leave. Which is kind of true, right? Like she could just break the fucking window whenever she wanted, sort of. Or like any of the, like the Hecate who come, like they could definitely do something, but they choose not to because they're still following the story. Yeah, the they're myth. like, hey, only a power beyond our bullshit rules can save you. And then, like I say, the cats aren't going to dream themselves as something more because they're content with the story of themselves as small, weak, subservient humans. The cats one is the one that doesn't quite fit with the thing that I, like when, so when Mike suggested his question as being like, what is the theme in this volume? As like the stories are so disparate. I'm not sure there is one, but then looking at it through the quote unquote cautionary cautionary tales lens was like, Oh, okay. Like, people who want a thing too much either a can become monstrous in pursuit of the thing or b like can realize that the thing is unfulfilling and bullshit right, right. except that but like what about the cats though then <laughs> in that like well like i said the cats are living lives as cats and not as rulers supposedly because I mean, gaiman the says that they could it's at the end that the cats basically will never achieve this because they're cats and they're never going to they're, they're, they're content they so that, that implies that this this cat that's walking around the world sp sp uh, sharing the story is going to fail like it's not going to work so ultimately she wants this thing she's seeking vengeance for her for her dead children and it doesn't matter um just she's, she's caught up in it and she's she's trapped by her own her own desire to change reality yeah and Rainy and Facade is trapped by the modern day myth of what a superhero should be. The fact that she doesn't match that is driven in her to like deep depression and suicide. Can I tell you how much the like title page of Facade just like I commiserate with it? The phone. Oh god, put on a brave face, it's just a telephone. I have always loved Facade and it's a, probably my favorite Sandman issue. Possibly. Oh, it's an all-timer, even though, like, again, it falls into the, like... But, like... Women... I have never resonated... <laughs> I've resonated with... I did this, this last read-through. It's like, 
I feel you so much, girl. I understand. Yeah, exactly especially the last year and a half or whatever, right? Like being locked in a room and like wanting more, but being terrified of like going outside or like interacting with it. Like, oh, girl, I feel it. I worked from the coffee shop today. It's fine, Pat. Everything's fine. I'm fine. I'm telling you guys, a year of like quarantining. I don't know, like, Agoraphobia is, is a little much, but it's brought out some of that. <laughs> I tried to say good morning to someone at the library when I was dropping off a book. And I think just because, like, I'm not used to talking to people, it came out, I was, <laughs> like, Oof. damn it. Interacting yeah. with people is, is, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it, it did hit me a little bit noticing that, that she was stuck at home, just like constantly in need of cigarettes. Like, yeah, I, I, I can commiserate with that. After the last two years, whatever. It's going to be two years shortly. I mean, I've, I've had my face fall into some bolognese, let me tell you. <laughs> Rainy needs discord is what she needs. Something. But, like, even Ra in that story is caught up in his own myth, right? He's yes. still creating yeah, the metamorphic. Yeah, where he's like, hey, I'm just going to keep making these. The, the battle has been done for hundreds or thousands of years, and he's still doing it. He's still caught up in it. He's got to fight it, man, because that's what he wants. Because the story tells him that's the thing he needs to do, so he, he does it. So yeah, that's the way that there's there's a common through line. There's a cautionary tale throughout all of them. Mike, did you have any other ones that you thought had a, a tale that we didn't, or a, a moral that we didn't touch on? No, I think think you hit them all. But Mike, why did I choose them to be cautionary tales? That's the real because question. Because you're Patrick Fitzgerald Black and you do whatever the fuck you want. No, there can it I is. tell you though? There when... it is. Mike was considering his question being like, what the hell is the theme of this volume? And I was like, ah, I don't know if there is a theme because it's four completely different single issues. I was like, oh, okay, maybe though there's a theme about like the toll of creation, if that makes sense, of like Madoc does these terrible things to produce his novels and movies and whatever, and like the cats have to like really work to make this world that's the cat world and Shakespeare has made this weird fucking deal with Dream where he's got to make two plays and, like, it completely obliterates his relationship he has with his family. And Rainy has been, like, transformed into something other than human and didn't really give her permission, but, like, has been recreated as Element Girl. Like, that was kind of what no I was only entered the, the pyramid, but yeah. Yeah, like, the thing to me was, like, okay... Each of these stories is kind of talking about how the act of creating something new either like itself is monstrous or like takes a toll. I don't know. That's kind of what I was kicking around in initially before we went for the cautionary tales framework. Which I think is all the same. For yeah. It's circling all the same yeah. thing, I think. Yeah, no, it's all it's all in the same wheelhouse for sure. I gotta say, people really like that Midsummer Night's Dream issue. I'm not a big fan. I find it more boring than the other three. So in the volume I have, there's a script for Calliope. I don't know if there is in the volume you guys read. You guys. You guys read. Um, And then in the... So Neil Gaiman has a master class about writing, and one of them is about comics and like he goes through the script for midsummer night's dream and that was super interesting actually because like it's all in his notebook and he's got like thumbnails and stuff so if you liked that issue which apparently is award-winning I, that's something you might want to check out i think um, i need to be a bigger fan of of shakespeare and specifically midsummer's night dream because i can see that he does fun things with i was play, trying to pay more play. attention to like these are the passages he specifically chose when i was rereading it today yeah and I st- still don't think I quite got there. I think I'm on the same page as you. I think it's fun. And I think if you're like a Shakespeare file, you'll really enjoy it. Obviously, it's, it's award winning. But yeah, it really, compared to Facade, psh, please. Please. I mean, the art's very good. <laughs> True. I mean, the art's very good in Facade, too. But... Facade's real good. I enjoyed that the actors were, uh, were proud that they were pretty when they were wearing drag. That was fun. <laughs> The page where Puck is doing the final bit from Midsummer Night's Dream yeah. and just looks real creepy is good. Doing a Grinch smile. Yeah. Again, I think I also would probably agree with you, Pat, that I got more out of Facade personally. 
yeah, I think it's a fun issue more so than so obviously facade is a hundred percent game and creation, right? Midsummer's Night's Dream is sort of. I mean, Element Girl is not. I mean, the metamorphe themselves aren't, but like the story around her is. I told you, Pat, that there's a Neil Gaiman like metamorpho bit that's in Wednesday yeah, Comics, which that. was like that weekly thing that came out in newspaper format or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I guess Neil Gaiman sure. likes those metamorphe. They are themselves I mean, tra- tragic figures, which I feel Gaiman is attractive to. All right, we good. You're I think on? so. Awesome. Are you though? Is anyone anyone ever actually good? I yelled a lot, so I'm Dude, feeling good about I'm it. Gonna cu- I'm gonna have to cut that rant about why I picked the question, the structure of my question. Oh, no, keep it, because like I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, edit some of it. It's a, I'm gonna edit some of it, Matt. He has a skin disease. I was. There's only two beers before and one. You had beer. a double. You had a no two. Don't give me your excuses. There's one, two beers before, one of which was a double. Some good then... discussions this time. Always nice to explore different <laughs> perspectives. Skin disease. The Dream Journal will be back in the near future to delve into Sandman Volume 4, Seasons of Mist. Yeah, you can re-record this whatever you want. We'll be joined by special guests, so be sure not to miss it. Till then, don't give Matt any more beers. <laughs> yeah, she has a skin disease. Could she even eat that spaghetti bolognese? That's what I want to know. She doesn't have a stomach. I was actually wondering about that.